ಕುಂದಾವನಧಾಮ मथुरा धाम की जय पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की श्री श्री मायापुर नवदीप धाम की जय गंगा माय की जय यमुना माय की जय तुलसी देवी की जय गौर प्रेमानंद और ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल्ड डिवोटीज और ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल्ड डिवोटीज और ग्लोरीज और ग्लोरीज टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरांग ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जाय उदीरे नष्ट प्रायश भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भक्त भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ट की कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाय गोविंदय नमो नम सो वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम कैंटो वन चैप्टर नाइन इन टाइटल द पासिंग अवे ऑफ भीष्मदेव इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्णा टेक्स थर्टीन संस्थितेरथे पांडो वृथा बाल प्रजावदू युष्मे बहुन क्लेशा प्राप्ता तो कवती मुहु संस्थितेरथे पांडो वृथा वृथा बाल प्रजावदू युष्मे बहुन क्लेशा प्राप्ता तो कवती मुहु संस्थितेरथे पांडो वृथा बाल प्रजावदू युष्मे बहुन क्लेशा प्राप्ता तो कवती मुहु संस्थित पांडो 
तुथा बाल प्रजावहु विस्मत कृते बहुन क्लेशान प्राप्ता तोकवती मु समस्तिते तिरते पांडो तुथा बाल प्रजावदु विस्मत कृते बहुन क्लेशान तुत्ता तुकवती मुहु माता जी ओके समस्तिते after the demise, Atirathe, of the great general Pandav, Pandu, Tratha, Kunti, Bala Praja, having young children, Tadhu, Vadu, sorry, Vadu, my daughter in law, Yishmat Krute, on your account, Bahun, multifarious. Klesha, affections, prapta, underwent, tokavati, in spite of having grown up boys, muhu, constantly. Yeah. So the translation is, as far as my daughter in law, my, my daughter in law Kunti is concerned, upon the great general Pandu's death, she became a widow with many children and therefore she suffered greatly. And when you were grown up, she suffered a great deal also because of your actions. Purpured by Srila Prabhupada. The sufferings of Kunti Devi are doubly lamented. She suffered greatly because of early widowhood and to get her minor children brought up in the royal family. And when her children were grown up, she continued to suffer because of her son's actions. So her sufferings continued. This means that she was destined to suffer by providence. And this one has to tolerate without being disturbed. Oma Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadam Pinham Pandeham Shri Guroshtra Shri Guru Vaishnavasne Naslakta Shri Vankatancha Antadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada and Sagana Lalitnata Shri Vishakhan Vitasha Nama Omishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashat Desha Tarane, Vanchakal Patarubhyasya, Kripa Sindhu Bhaya Evacha, Nanam Pavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo Namo Nama, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadai Gaura Bhaktarunda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> Hare Krishna. So, seeking the blessings of all the Vaishnavas assembled here and those who are also watching this lecture online uh, through YouTube or any other channels. So, in this verse, uh, there is a background to this particular verse that greatness of a Vaishnava. So Bhishma Dev, he is lying on his uh, deathbed waiting and he is so many uh, great souls, personalities have come including Lord Krishna also is uh, there. And at the time of death, 
the great souls, how they are expressing their gratitude. It is very difficult probably for us to understand at the time of death what kind of pain one must be going through and what to talk about Vishmadev. But in spite of that situation also, he is remembering the, all these personalities. And especially, it is very difficult that uh, a father-in-law or a mother-in-law glorifying his or her daughter-in-law. It's a very, very rare phenomenon. But here, uh, Vishmadev is very sensitively amongst all the people, so many people, Kunti Devi was not so sig so significant in that sense because Pandavas were the people he was counselling. The previous verse we can actually see that how Vishmadev was counselling, but he with great uh, remembrance he is actually praising his own daughter-in-law and talking about her here. So he talks about the distress which she went through, the early distress. So what was the early distress for her? Because the Pandu's, Pan, the Pandu's death, uh, she was having five children, uh, three from her, and Madri also had two children. And after Pandu's death, Madri said that, OK, I won't be able to take care of these children the way you will take care. It's not an easy thing. To, it is very difficult to raise one child, what to talk about five children, and that to, to in this kind of adversity. So her husband leaves, her co-wife, she leaves, and she is now left with handling these five children that were in the forest. It's not a place which is easy to handle such kind of situation. So in this verse also, Prabhupada mentions in the purport that, you know, uh, and when her children were grown up, she continued to suffer because of her son's action. So one may think that how come that, you know, she is suffering with the actions of Pandavas. So that doubt may, may come. And, but we have to understand that how this situation took place. So we can look at the distress which can cause by children. The various situations that the children can cause distress for the parents. And uh, we can see from the example that how Chitra Ketu Maharaj, he was actually looking for a son. And uh, after having son, he was suffering. And there are people like uh, Dhritarashtra or, you know, or even Anga also. Dhritarashtra had Kauravas and Anga, he was having son like Vena. So having such kind of a son, which are demoniac sons, is also suffering. But greater distress is that when you have sons which are good sons, like how your Kunti Maharani is, is saying that, you know, this uh, her son was not a sons were not bad. Or Hiranyakeshu was dist distressed because he had good son like Prahlad Maharaj. So we can see the differences, how different people can suffer in this situation. So the Pandavas, they were born in uh, the forest. They were not born in some palace. But what are the qualities which they, they were developed? They developed they developed the qualities of humility, gratitude. They knew that what is, what, how difficult this life is. Whereas the Kauravas, they were born uh, in a palace and they were raised in how they were raised. So this, this is the different parenting part that they were raised in more of arrogance. But uh, in this situation, why they, why Pandavas were suffered, suffering? Because they were suffering because they were surrounded by people which are evil minded, like Kauravas. And they, sometimes it is very difficult when you are uh, a good person and you are surrounded by people who are of evil nature or thinking always thinking negatively, how I can destroy you. It's not an easy thing. And in that situation, being good, one option is that, okay, I start following what they are doing so that they are also happy. If they are uh, following the wrong path, let me also follow the wrong path so that they, I can make them happy. But they were not, they are virtuous. They are dharmic 
the dharma was their main principle whereas gandhari's son they were not following any religions principles hmm. so this is where we we start thinking that in bhagavad gita goes that why you know bad things happen to good people we can see in our day to day life also that whenever a uh, people who are doing more of social uh, services somebody who is in the police or somebody is in a uh, army or navy you know there is always a fear or this thing that okay something may can happen to this my son the parents were always thinking that my son is going now for the war or to the border any terrorist can attack and he may get killed so there is a anxiety for that <clears throat> there is a uh, suffering because of that and a thief or a criminal his his parents are also suffering because they are also thinking that oh you know he may get caught up he may go to the jail or he may be killed so the suffering is there for everyone so we if we look at it from the spiritual aspect also there are three type of suffering all of us know that how adhyatmics adi daivik adi bhautik all three kind of sufferings are there one is on the body or mind level you know people are suffering we see the from from the scriptures how prahlad maharaj was also put into such kind of suffering on the bodily level or mind level also how hiranyakashipu was harassing him in various ways similarly even dhruva maharaj when he was uh he wanted to sit on the throne in a very casual manner like how the children are moving they just come and sit on the father's lap but he was insulted so you know the more on the mind level or the other living entities so there is or always the sufferings are coming from various levels and the um there is a uh, suffering which is at a spiritual level also now how do we understand this part of spiritual level is whenever we are not connected with krishna with the lord with the supreme personality of god then there is a suffering till the time we were not connected by the mercy of prabhupad we got connected and other vaishnavas but till that time we were actually suffering from on a spiritual level also and as now also it's not that we it is it has stopped because when as soon as we get disconnected from this spiritual level we start the the suffering again begins so sometimes this sufferings of immediate nature we see the immediate cause okay because of this person i am suffering sometimes we are able to understand okay this is my karma or this is because of the forgetful of the lord forness of the lord so krishna says in the bhagavad gita that this is dukkhalaya mashashan this house this world is full of miseries it is our choice that we made that we came here what are this is one of the reasons and sometimes our we are carrying all these irrational beliefs that okay this should happen this way that should happen that way and if that doesn't happen then we start suffering so this is more on the uh, mental level and i was listening to one of the lectures of prabhupad and prabhupad said that all of us are actually suffering we are having skin disease so i was surprised like how how are we why prabhupad is saying like this and prabhupad said the skin disease means that we are all on bodily level we are always suffering because that we are connected we feel that we are this body and not the soul and that's why we are always suffering and he then jokingly said that uh, there is a tablet prabhupad was from the pharmaceutical industry before so he said that anasin tablet i don't know how many of us still know about this anasin tablet but earlier days yes people know from other generation earlier generation that there was anasin tablet so any pain so there was advertisement that okay you know take anasin and it will go away so prabhupad was saying that this anasin tablet was there but now this it is nowhere people are need to take especially that time prabhupada was talking about western world they have to take so many other tablets and which we can't even know the names also to be peaceful just to be peaceful we have to survive on tablets and of course this is the situation now here in india also that there are people who are suffering from mental diseases 
So always this this uh, things are there. Not there. So these sufferings, why they come us? There's that we have to somewhere we have to start thinking that we have to now transcend from this bodily level to the spiritual level. So for pure devotees, why this suffering comes? Because the Lord wants, the Lord wants to glorify them. How they are tolerating these sufferings? How they are coping up with these sufferings? You know, and they set an example for us. And to, for us, it is to remind us that, okay, you are at the wrong place, you need to get out. Many times people come and uh, the how we deal with them at that particular time, they start feeling, oh, that why this person is willing, he doesn't want me here. So that's the way we deal with them. And that's how they, they say that, okay, let, it, let, me, let me not be here. If somebody deals with you, you come for the, to the temple for the first time and somebody deals with you in a wrong manner, you don't feel like coming back again to the temple. So these are the things. So reacting to suffering, how we normally react. So when any suffering comes on us, we start thinking, okay, we take it more, very emotionally, okay, this, this is happening with me. But when it happens with somebody else, we are more, more on the practical. Uh, like yesterday, Din Gaurang Prabhu was talking about that how we deal with sufferings, that either we say that, okay, we either listen to them, or we uh, tell them, are, tumara se mere jada mera suffering hai. So we compete in that also. Mera suffering bada hai. So these are the different kind of sufferings and uh, these are the dealings which we are uh, listening. So this is depends on our consciousness. If you are in a mode of goodness or passion or ignorance, then our coping or our reaction to the suffering changes. So, so this belief, what the belief, what we have, or consciousness, what we have, it changes our behavior. So some pe people, especially when we are on the platform of I am the doer. Some people react by blaming other, blaming or uh, complaining. So this can happen on the self. The self blame is one of the things. In the previous verse, also uh, it is mentioned that uh, how Yudhishthir Maharaj actually this was the, the counselling which Bhishma Dev was saying that oh what terrible sufferings and what terrible injustice you our good soul suffer for being the sons of religion personified, you know. So he was actually lamenting, Yudhishthira Maharaj was lamenting that, you know, because of me all these things happened. The whole massacre, this whole uh, war took place because of me. So he was taking the everything on him, so blaming himself. Of course, he was taking the responsibility, not in a very negative way, but still he was in that condition. Then there are people like Karna, who are always blaming others, you know, and we also do this, that when something happens, we start blaming others. But Karna was also doing this, this happened to me, that happened to me, because of this, I am like this. So this is the blaming others, the situation. And there are people like Krita Dyuti, the wife of uh, our uh, Chitra Ketamara, yeah. So she was... She, when her son died, you know, she started blaming and cursing that, okay, that this Lord is inexperienced. When normally in the, uh, any, any leader, he, if he make, makes a mistakes, then immediate reaction from most of the people is that, he is such a person, he has a leadership level, he is sitting there he, and he is doing this mistake. So he is the Supreme Lord, he has created everything, she knows that, but still she is saying that, his inexperience, his insensitive, and not merciful. So every time we choose to complain like this, what happens is we voluntarily arrest our growth. We get into the mode of that self-pity that, okay, this happened and I can't do anything. So that's what actually happens. Another way people start reacting is by cursing. They start cursing that, okay, you did this. I mean, we can see the example of Gandhari, how she cursed Krishna. And that, you know, because of you, this my, my son died. She did not see that what they were doing, but she simply just cursed. Or even Sringi, you know, just because his father was treated like this, 
immediately cursed. So, so this is one other thing. Hiranyakashyapu, he had such a great resent because he was resenting because his brother was died. He knew all philosophy. He spoke all the philosophy to his, uh, you know, uh, Hiranyakashyapu's relatives, wives and other children and everyone. But he was resenting that, okay, you did this, now I am going to kill Vishnu. So he had that audacity and he was reacting that way. Kaikeyi was lamenting. Now, when she realized that what blunder she did, then she realized that, you know, now this has happened, everything, every, uh, Lord Ram has gone out, and the whole uh, Ayodhya, Raja, they are blaming. And then her reaction that she was lamenting for these sufferings which are coming. And sometimes we respond by fear. We can see how Sugriva, he was, when he was suffering, he knew that Wali is so strong and he has taken away his wife and everything. So he was in so much of fear till he met Lord Ram and Vishnu Lakshman. I, I, there is a book which is written by uh, Victor Frankl called Man's Search for Meaning. And in that, he shares his experiences in uh, how when he was in the concentration camp, he was about to put in the gas chamber and he was telling that out of fear so many people died there just out of fear and he said that this is the choice which i had to make that how i can stay alive so he was constantly there there is a hope and that's how he survived and the day he was supposed to be put into the gas chamber that day the news came that hitler died and he survived after that, then he wrote this book and so many uh, other psychological things which he gave. So, you know, how we respond, it depends. So, various ways uh, people react to the sufferings. But how do we cope with the suffering? To cope up with that suffering, we should take it as a challenge. We can take it as a challenge and say that, okay, let's, let's, let me do my part. I am going through these various emotions. What choice I have, what belief, what I have. We create, we have these beliefs because of many things. Our upbringing, society, people, what what uh, learnings we got early in our life. So that way we create beliefs, and that's how we react, right? So one is that irrational belief sometimes which we create that okay, I need to solve all the problems in my life, whether I have control, it is in my control or not. We try to do that. And when we try to do that, what happens is that we start uh, having that expectation from ourselves that why I'm not doing it. And we suffer because of that. So sometime we, uh, you know, it is better to accept these sufferings than to avoid it. So, like we can again see the example of Chitra Ketu Maharaj. What was his, what was he doing? He wanted a son, so he was ma getting married so many times. Thousands of lakhs of times he got married. Very difficult now. One marriage is difficult. But he was doing that. He was a, And after having that, he was not again out having son. He did all yagya, got the blessings of the sages, and finally got a son also. And what happened after having son? Again, so much of misdirecting, envy, anger, which was coming towards him and his wife and on the son also. The result was the son was killed. Then again, that was the, uh, the challenges, you know. So he was suffering in spite of uh, all these things. So instead of tolerating that, obviously, he was given the good wisdom again by Narad Muni. So, all the problems we face, all the miseries we face, don't have solutions. So, some things we have to leave it to time, and some are for actually our purification. This karma and instruments of our karma, this, this cannot be avoided. And as we don't uh, have a choice also there, and that's why it is said that pain is inevitable. It is going to come because it is Dukkha Lem. But the choice is there, whether we have to suffer from that or not. And if you look at Kunti Devi, how 
or any other great personalities also, how did they face these things? So they took shelter of the great virtues, of course the Lord also and the prayers, but they were looking at humility or forgiveness, gratitude, tolerance, that is the way they were choosing. So they made the choice. And what was her belief? That if I surrender to Krishna, he will protect. And believing in this belief is actually the nishtha and the, at the highest level it is the prema. In uh, Shikshashtakam also we actually hear that, you know, Ashlishavata Padaratam Pinashtumam. So that, that what is the faith that Krishna, anything happens, Krishna, you are there. Whatever you do, you will protect me. So be, having that belief in this belief is very important. So let us touch upon some of the attributes of this tolerance because in the purport, Prabhupada is talking that these are the sufferings and, you know, by providence, but we, the only way is to tolerate. So, how this tolerate is arising from different feelings, different emotions. Sometimes the, the tolerance is coming out of love. And we can see that, you know, how parents many times, they tolerate the children, you know, right from beginning stage. Sometimes when the child is born, and the child doesn't sleep at night, you have to tolerate. And people often say, okay, now this is over. Within a within few months, this will get over. It will get into routine. But it's not that. The suffering continues. You know, the, there are different challenges at different stages. Then the child gets into teenage. There are different challenges. They're young. There are different challenges. So that those challenges don't end. Of course, there is a reverse way now that the children also have to tolerate their parents. <laughs> so another thing, if you ask children, they say that I have to tolerate my parents <laughs> in different way. So that is, you know, tolerance which has come out of love, tolerance which comes out of fear. I can't do anything that, you know, I, because sometimes it's such a that somebody is at authoritative level and who is telling you that, okay, you have to do this. You can't do anything, you can't say anything, but you have to tolerate that way also. And sometimes it is helplessness. Pandavas, they were seeing that Draupadi was getting disrobed in the whole assembly of so many people. And they were helpless. They were, they, had to, they were just tolerating that. It, internally they were not tolerating all these things, but they had to externally at least tolerate that thing. And Sometimes it is in ignorance. The third, tolerance comes out of ignorance. The, that Dhrut, Dhrut, uh, Dhritarashtra, if you look at him, that he was completely in ignorance and tolerating his sons, whatever they are doing, because he wanted his ulterior motive. So he had both ulterior motives as well as he was in ignorance. And there is a tolerance which is out of compassion also. Lord Nityananda, he was seeing that how this Jagai and Madai, they were beating him, you know, Haridas Thakur, all these things were happening. But just because of that compassion that he wanted, that what is the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, for that he was tolerating. So that's, that's another aspect. So there are various things because which make us start thinking how we should tolerate. Now, another aspect is the top tolerance is there internal tolerance and there is external tolerance. So, what is internal tolerance? So, Rupa Goswami talks about it in the first verse of Nectar instruction. Vacho Vegam, Manasa, Krodha Vegam, you know. So, a, a sober person, basically he talks about it. A sober person can tolerate the urge of speak, then mind's demands, the action of anger, urges of tongue, belly and genitals. So this is more of an internal tolerance. We have to tolerate these urges. And Prabhupada writes, in order to execute our spiritual consciousness to Krishna or Krishna consciousness, we should learn to tolerate. And Prabhupada also mentions that, that this whole life cycle of, a, of us is birth, old age, disease and death. And it is full of duality. It's not that, you know, we have to face duality. And when duality means what? It's like a balloon, you know, which is left free. 
which is going up and down. There is no control. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes... So these are all dualities and one has to tolerate those dualities. And the death is the most painful thing. The suffering is at the time of death. And if we have to prepare for that, then the tolerance is required. And that is more of an internal tolerance which is involved. Because if we are internally strong, then we can externally manifest that tolerance. And that's why it is said that one's greatness is a is ability to tolerate the provoking situations. So we have to have that internal tolerance. And what is external tolerance? So uh, I was just referring, seeing one verse in Srimad Bhagavatam from 11, 61. And this is the conversation between Uddhava and Krishna. And here he is saying that, uh, I'll just read out that, that, O soul of universe, the conditioning of one's personality in material life is very strong and therefore it is very difficult even for learned men to tolerate the offenses committed against them by ignorant people. And this is what actually happened with the Pandavas also. Right? Only your devotees who are fixed in your loving service and who have achieved peace by residing at your lotus feet are able to tolerate such offenses. So these are external offenses which are coming in the life of devotees or any pe people also. And I remember one uh, quote by His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj also. So he says that our spiritual life is nourished by taking some inconveniences for higher purpose. And we can only survive by tolerating inconveniences. So here, like a sadhakas, we have to become like a spiritual commandos. So if you look at the commandos or people who are in army, what are they doing? So they are constantly going through this kind of uh, practice, the sadhana, or you know, so that whenever they go on the in the war, sometimes they have to tolerate the pain. They get hit by the bullets, or sometimes they are caught and they are tortured. And when they are tortured, they have to. They, they don't have want to open their mouth and speak. What what is the what is the plan for the war? They can't. So for that, they have to be prepared. So for as a spiritual commandos, we also are, you know, constantly attacked by Maya and all unwanted things. But if we have to fight with that we have to prepare internally so that we can tolerate these external attacks. And that's why this uh, thing, you know, why uh, that we always say that pain is unavoidable, but suffering is optional. So w what is the outcome, you know, of this tolerance? When we start tolerating, you know, uh, especially the uh, frustration uh, tolerance ratio, when that increases, our emotional strength to handle that, it increases. So, when we tolerate, like we can see from the example that how Haridas Thakur, he was tolerating, he was beaten up and he was tortured, but he was still tolerating and responding with compassion. He had the choice of responding in any, any other ways. What was he doing? Because of that, he was transforming the heart of the soldiers who were actually torturing him. He was protected by Lord uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And earlier also, when the prostitute was there, he was tolerating, he was tolerating that attack of this prostitute. And when, not just tolerating, but transforming that uh, woman to a, to a devotee. So, we can see that how different personalities they have tolerated different situations and transferred. Srila Prabhupada is the greatest example how he tolerated. He was on the Jaladuta, he was suffering and he could have easily said that, okay, I am having so many heart attacks, health issues, let me get down at some harbor and let me go, go back and get admitted to some hospital or, you know, let me take care of this. But what was the outcome of this tolerance? He went there. Of course, the tolerance continued. His suffering was there, there also. What we have got today is Iskon because of Srila Prabhupada's tolerance. 
and th that is why we are here. But what, when we see, if we start looking at what he went through to give us this, and we sometimes fight for small, small issues that, okay, we don't have tolerance, I can't stand you, you know, being next to me you know, or doing this service with me. This is where sometimes we fall into prey of this kind of our egos. So while we are discussing about this, we have to also think, is it that we should just keep tolerating everything? And this is a question which many people ask and they start thinking about this. Um, Krishna also says in second chapter that Matra Sparshas to Kaunte Shitoshna Sukha Dukada. He's telling that okay, all this winter, summer, it will come, we have to tolerate. In this specific, in this verse, actually he is calling him as Kaunte and Bharat. He is calling Arjuna, son of Bharata. So why these specific things? The uh, very important thing we need to understand is that Krishna was telling Arjuna, you fight. Don't tolerate this thing. And Arjuna was actually willing. He said, no, no, no. Let me be in my comfort zone. I don't want all this fight. You know, they will suffer. They will die. I don't want to do this. So it was an easy way out. But Krishna was convincing him, okay, don't tolerate. You have to fight. So, very nice thing which I got to know from one devotee. So he said that one has to, one should not tolerate adharma but tolerate the inconveniences or challenges arising when we don't tolerate adharma. adharma. So when we are not tolerating adharma and we have to follow the dharma, there are many challenges which will come. It is like walking or swimming against the flow. Everybody is walking the other way and you are crossing the other way. So there are the difficulty. That is where the challenges will come. When we are trying to uh, cooperate with each other, it is always said that we have to cooperate with each other. But it is not so easy. When we start or think of cooperating, that is the when the situation where the challenges come. Because there are different personalities with whom we are dealing. If you are doing some service alone, sometimes it is easier. But when we are doing it together, it becomes difficult because everybody has a different nature. Hmm? So, it is important that we have to discriminate what to tolerate and what not to tolerate. We can see the example of from uh, the whole Lord. When Brugumuni kicked the chest of the Lord, he was so tolerating. The Lord was so tolerating. He was in fact asking that, okay, you might have got hurt. You know, he was, his attitude was of that. So, he's teaching that, okay, I need to tolerate this. But at the same time, when... Amarish Maharaj was getting offended by Durvas Muni. Lord did not tolerate that. And so this balance of tolerance is important. Prabhupada, in the initial days, the devotees were there. They were not even devotees. He, Prabhupada was tolerating everything, whatever they are doing. But once they became devotees, they started following he said that I, I want you to follow the four regulatory principles. I want you to chant. So he did not tolerate. And then when devotees started become, becoming, some devotees started become having showing some kind of surgia mentality. He did not tolerate that. Absolutely. Or they, when Prabhupada saw that they are fighting, quarreling, that there is a negative way of competing with each other, he did not tolerate that. Yeah. And when it came, like any project, Prabhupada, like uh, the Juhu temple, Prabhupada fought like a lion. He did not say that, no, now it is not happening, let, let, let Krishna do. It was not, he did not just give up. So, this is another aspect that how the tolerance is need to be balanced. We have to understand what need to tolerate, what we should not. And sometimes this misdirected application of to, uh, tolerance or misunderstanding what this tolerance is can create havoc. We have seen the Indian history how people, they suffered, you know, because they tolerated things which they should have not tolerated. So these are the things which we have to think about. 
so how do we tolerate you know that's one thing one question means how do we cultivate these things so chaitanya mahaprabhu says that we have to wear this uh, you know garland of verse of trinadapi sunichena so what this me- means is that amani na mane dena so that requires both the tolerance and humility it's not easy that you know somebody is disrespecting you and still you go and give uh, there are different gradations still you have to go and give you know sometimes you have to worship them help them you can't tolerate but you have to still do it so that is the purification one has to go so what is not tolerance so tolerance is not like being passive tolerance means one has to keep small things small and focus on the bigger picture focus on the uh, uh, holistic picture so sometimes we see that uh, you know people undergo some surgeries and that surgery is like very crit- critical surgery after going through that surgery then they have to take rest they are bedridden they can't move you know or there is a pricking now these are all smaller sufferings but people still complain okay ye ho raha hai wo ho raha hai but then the doctor has to say no you you tolerate this because it is for the higher purpose you have dealt with your heart you have dealt with your kidney or your brain so that is a major thing the all small small things you just leave so that is one thing which one can do and of course we should try our best and if things doesn't work out we have to just tolerate we have to reconcile with ourselves that you know when situations difficult situation comes that we have to understand philosophically also that this is krishna's desire these are my past karmas you know which are which krishna is trying to remove and just just a small token so these understandings is is what is important so um, another thing is that uh, studying the great the life of great souls the mahajans or the acharyas and meditating on their actions and when we start meditating that this this becomes great inspiration for all of us you know it it, it increases our self awareness what i should be doing and how i should deal with that that is what actually happens when we uh, try to practice this <clears throat> philosophy or the knowledge is one aspect the it is like a vaccine like in covid time all of us have hopefully taken vaccinations one dose two dose booster dose so this is probably we may be thinking it is a constant recurring thing but this is what actually for us also if you look at it from a spiritual angle we have to keep vaccinating ourselves through the spiritual doses by hearing bhagavatam reading bhagavatam you know with our sadhana so these are things one has to do, do. so uh, i was reading in one book that you know how in mahabharata like it, like when yudhishthir when he was exiled he lost everything and he was going so he was uh, you know dejected or frustrated so the sages come into the picture and they gave him they told tell him the story of nala how he suffered uh, and how he dealt with that so nala came back he lost his wife he lost his kingdom but how he fought back so when we take shelter you know when he when yudhishthir maharaj heard about this greatness of this character of nala he gained confidence that this problem his problem was not unique many times we start thinking okay ye mera hi problem hai ye kisi ko life mein aayega aayega hi nahi so he he got to know about this that you know not everything is unsolvable and he gained confidence and uh, that way so rather than complain he realized that he could deal with it so i can there is nothing greater problem than this and i can also deal with that so we have to do whatever it takes 
to tolerate and handle that particular situation. So one is philosophy, one is uh, taking shelter of the Lord, the prayers, the internal aspect which is there. But one important thing which we have to do is, which we can in our practical situation, is the importance of association of devotees. And if we take shelter of the association of devotees, it really helps because when we have somebody else with us who is willing to help us like a net, then it is easy to tolerate. Single-handedly one cannot tolerate it. But if there are devotees who are helping us, it becomes very easy. And that's where uh, we are fortunate in this temple and now many other temples, there are devotee care system. So devotees were suffering in various ways on the bodily level, physical, emotional. In our congregation, we have school, Gopal's Garden School, we have Bhaktivedan Hospital, we have a counselor system, mentor system, all these things which are there to support and how to, to tolerate. Because it is not sometimes easy. I just wanted to share one experience like many years back. Uh, I was in Mayapur Yatra and I was working in one of the corporates and the Yatra was going very nicely and one day evening after the class I got a call from my boss. So it was a very awkward time after 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, very uh, rare. So then he called me, I said why he is calling, so I just spoke to him and then he told me that there is a downsizing which is happening in our organizations, they are you know, removing people. So from our department also there are people who have been asked to leave. So I, I and this this is a common thing which happens in many corporates. So then is then I asked so you so what is the what is it? So he said yes I'm sorry but one of the names is yours. So I was so shocked. I said what was what is the reason? I did my uh, you know targets were achieved everything was going well what is it? He said, I don't know. It's just that they want to do it. So I was shocked and I started thinking, what will happen now? <laughs> because the source of income will stop and then I have to manage my things at home. How will I do it? How, when will, how will I get my new job? Where will I go? And this is all happening in the Yatara and I was disturbed. And uh, next day I was like, uh, there was a lecture by His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj and it was going and my mind was not there in the lecture I was just thinking what will happen I was so disturbed and fortunately uh, you know I was sitting behind and uh, Gaur Gopal Prabhu was sitting in front ahead of me so I thought Ki, what should I do now and I did, was not so clear about my philosophical understanding that I was thinking now these miseries have come uh, whether you know I should go and ask the Lord no, then it is like for my own thing. So, and our, our service, our prayer should be, we should be selfless, we should not think about this. So, those all kind of things were there. So, then I just approached Prabhuji and I just asked him that, Prabhuji, you know, I just wanted to talk to you. And I told him that this is what has happened and uh, I'm, I'm worried and I don't know even to pray and ask. We should not go and ask to go pinna that, okay, give me the job, you know. So I was double minded. So then he told me very nicely. He said that you pray, you tell that this is my condition, I am suffering, and uh, I need to do so many things. I need to practice my devotional service. I need to take care of uh, my family, my other responsibilities. And in this mind, I will not be even probably even to do my sadhana also properly, you know, which was very uh, prevalent because I was not able to even focus on the lecture, what Maharaj was saying. So then he said that you should pray. And then only thing you should add is that, okay, whatever is best for me, you do it. That's it. So I was kind of relieved. Next day morning, I went for Mangalarti and then I was just meeting one devotee. He was distributing book. I was not an Indian, but he was just distributing. I was just standing there and seeing what books he was giving and I was just... Then generally he started talking to me and again, you know, he told me that, I, I don't know why, but suddenly I, I just spoke to him also. Normally I don't speak to strangers about these things. Don't, people whom I know, I talk to them normally. But 
I just told him, and he said, do one thing, why are you so worried? You know, why don't you just do uh, arti, special arti for Lord Narsing Dev? And you write your prayers, you write everything, whatever you feel, you know, whatever you are going through, just write that. And it was like a, you know, suddenly a, a sudden eye-opener for me, because I was not even thinking on those lines that I should do this. Now, this is the second time somebody is telling, okay, go and pray. So I immediately went, I wrote everything, I told my wife also that, okay, this is what I'm writing. And I, I just wrote and I gave. And this whole thing was happening. And uh, I did my things. Somehow the yatra ended, I came back. And after I came back, then I realized that those people who were present here at that time, who were like, I was out of station, I was in yatra in Mayapur. And those people, my other colleagues who were there, they were asked the same day that, okay, you come and you put your resignation now and you go. And I was not there. Because I was not there, they could not process this. So I was saved. And I, after I went back, the things started changing because my boss resigned. And the management started thinking that, okay, there is no one to take care of this. Now you have to take care of this. So the situation who was, which was a suffering suddenly changed, shifted things to uh, that I was like, okay, now you are the head. <laughs> so like I was like, you know, uh, meanwhile I was also searching for jobs and many things were happening. And I, I applied to a competitor company. I just called him because I had good relationship with those also. I just called that, okay, you know, there is there's a situation I want to join. So they said, yeah, come down, you know, we'll have a chat and all those things. And they were almost ready to, willing to give me that offer. So then there was a situation whether I continue here, I go there. So again, I started praying that, okay, now I have to do something again for this. And somehow I took the decision to continue here. And within a month's time, I got to know that company, which is a big company, I can't take the name here, but a very big company, a big group. And they decided, after one month, they decided to close down that business unit where I was supposed to join. So you never know how, you know, how Krishna can take care of these things and Krishna's devotees. So I was so grateful that, you know, we have to have this kind of uh, system where we can share with people, take their guidances to, so that we are clear, because many times we are not clear when the sufferings come, that am I doing things right way. So this is, we are fortunate that we have this net which is created by Srila Prabhupada and his disciples, which are constantly protecting us, helping us to tolerate the sufferings. And this is the whole theme of this particular verse that we have to tolerate the sufferings without being disturbed. And without being disturbed is something which we can do only with the shelter of the devotees and the Lord. So these are a few things which I just wanted to share. Uh, those who are sitting here for such a long time, they really have a tolerance. Those who are <laughs> on the net, they can switch off and they can go. But I think I can say that all of you are tolerant, you are tolerated, whatever I am speaking. Of course, the words are pure, but I am not so much pure to talk about all these things. So, thank you so much again for all of you, for your patience, for your tolerance. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Papad ki jai. Hare Krishna.